and welcome to chapter 25 of the Canadian Securities Course, Volume 2. In this chapter, we will be discussing fee-based accounts. So there are some advantages to fee-based accounts. One advantage is you will be able to offer more services. So high net worth clients, they do need more from their advisors than simple stock and bond picking. So um, basically this is used under the traditional commission-based model. You'll just make your money off of the stock and bond picking and the trailer fees and the mutual funds. However, they also do require advice on risk management, estate planning, debt management, insurance, and retirement planning. So having a fee-based account sort of makes it so you can offer these services and also get paid for it. Now, payment is also tied to performance. And market surveys show that high net worth clients, they want a portion of the advisor's fee to depend on the performance of the portfolio. This puts both the client and the advisor on the same side since they both have an interest in higher performance. Greater transparency. So high net worth clients, they do appreciate the clear disclosure that comes with a fee-based account. They pay fees directly and the amount appears on their regular account statements. So some clients do like being able to see the fees that they are paying to towards the advisor. Whereas other clients, they may focus on this fee too much and it might be the only topic of discussion. So there, I do see a bit of a disadvantage here, um, but it is listed under an advantage. Um, also greater trust. So under a commission-based structure, the client might wonder whether the advisor is suggesting investments because the product carries a higher commission. In a fee-based relationship, the clients can be confident that the recommendations are based on their best interest. Now, some disadvantages of fee-based accounts, there can be higher potential cost. So if a client uh, uses a buy and hold strategy with their investments, they may not fully benefit from a fee-based account given that trades are part of the service package. Some fee-based accounts also have a limit on the number of trades allowed in the account, and the maximum depends on the firm and on the size and type of the account, but uh, this is obviously a disadvantage if there is a limit. There is potential for neglect as well, so the continuing income stream from these fee-based accounts can lead advisors to neglect the account. And also, there are sometimes some extra fees. So in some limited circumstances, the client can be charged for extra costs, especially in programs where costs are not all-inclusive. So clients still play, pay the trailer fee on top of the account fee. Um, that does happen sometimes. However, recently this practice has been mitigated. So um, now we're gonna look at just an overview of managed fee-based accounts. So first off, you do have professional investment management. That's a really uh, uh, primary uh, feature of managed fee-based accounts. Also assets within the account are held exclusively for the client. Um, a package of services, so again, like we mentioned in the um, pros of managed fee-based accounts, you do you are able to offer multiple different services instead of just stock picking and bond picking um, services beyond investment management so you are going to be able to offer those different services um, an investment policy statement so this statement allows the client to specifically outline how the assets within the accounts are to be managed and also um, the greater transparency within the managed fee-based account now, there are different types of uh, sort of fee-based accounts, um, and you can see here the graph. So we do have mutual fund wraps and ETF wraps, advisor-managed accounts, separately managed accounts, household accounts, and private family offices, and they go up by product sophistication and by account size. So we are gonna start off um, by talking about the mutual fund wraps and the ETF wraps. Um, but, but first off, um, the fees on these managed, managed fee-based accounts, they are tax deductible for non-registered accounts, and we did mention this in the previous chapter about Canadian taxes. And depending on the client's assets, 
the fees do tend to be lower than on mutual funds. Uh, and unlike standardized fees on mutual funds, the fee on managed accounts is negotiable. So in most cases, it is based on the size of the client's assets and the required services, but they can be negotiated. And all fees on a managed account are transparent and they are clearly reported to the client. So first we're gonna go into mutual fund wraps and ETF wraps, it's a type of managed account. First off, we have the ETF fund or ETF wraps. And there are two different approaches to this. First off, you have the passive approach and this is when the portfolio manager determines the client's risk tolerance. And then they just set an optimal, optimal asset allocation and they establish the portfolio with ongoing rebalancing. So a lot like that dynamic rebalancing strategy. Whereas you also do have active approach and the portfolio manager with this approach determines the client's long-term risk tolerance, but then they do apply a short-term tactical approach by actively overweighting or underweighting the sector and the client's asset allocation, depending on um, what the manager thinks will overperform or underperform. And uh, some advantages of the active management approach, it allows uh, clients to pay less in fees because the lower cost of the underlying investment management is low um, and a selection of asset allocation models is available to meet the investor's need. There's great ability to hedge currency exposure and the advisor can focus more on um, the different services as well. Now uh, in terms of mutual fund wraps, they do differ from funds of funds because the client holds the actual funds within their account. Whereas a fund of funds simply invests in other funds and uh, investors hold units of the fund of funds. So the account holder, um, they hold mutual funds managed by sub advisors and there is an overlay manager and they determine the composition and weighting and they do rebalance the portfolio periodically. So some, some advantages of this is uh, a coordinated investment account optimized on asset allocation and selection of managers. Also, there is a selection of asset allocation models. There's the ability to hedge currency exposure and there's ongoing oversight management of the funds. Next, we're gonna look at advisor managed accounts. And in these accounts, the advisor is the one making investment decisions on the client's behalf, and they must be licensed as a portfolio manager. Now, some advantages of this is the cost may be lower because no other parties are involved. Also, the advisor understands the specific client's needs. There's that one-on-one -on -one relationship with them. Uh, and some programs permit client accounts to exclude certain securities. So for example, if a client really doesn't like tobacco type products, then you could have that as an exclusion and they won't have um, companies that invest in that. Another example would be a CEO of a company who has um, a bunch of money tied up in stock options and shares of the company that they are working for then you could have um, an exclusion where they, the fund manager, they wouldn't invest in that sector of the market since the client already would have plenty of exposure to it. And so there are two different types of advisor managed accounts. You have the model based accounts, which refers to the ongoing programs under which investment advisors manage their clients portfolios and these programs tend to use model portfolios whereas the non-model based account management are typically used temporarily when clients are unwilling or unable to tend to their own accounts um, and they are used when a client is ill or absent from the country so advisors tend to simply monitor an existing account of securities since uh, the non-model based account is short term in nature you also have separately managed accounts and clients can opt for an external portfolio manager to have control over the investments held directly in their individual accounts. So as the sub advisor uh, makes investment decisions, the actual securities are debited 
and credited to the client's dedicated account within the firm. It is a private portfolio, so assets are not pooled together, and it can either be a single mandate or a multi-mandate managed account. Now, the single mandated managed account, this is directed by a single portfolio manager or team of managers who focus on selecting securities and choosing the optimal, optimal asset allocation. Um, this allows the client to have access to sophisticated institutional portfolio managers while maintaining a relationship with their advisor. The downside about the single mandate managed accounts is that if a client has two mandates or two investment horizons or investment objectives, then they must actually have two separate single mandated managed accounts. Now you also do have the multi mandate managed accounts. And these accounts provide access to a dedicated group of sophisticated institutional uh, portfolio managers who are considered the sub-advisors to the overlay manager. Now these managers, they often align clients with two or more portfolio models and with each model representing a component of the client's greater diversified holdings. Another type of fee-based account is the household accounts, and this is a type of single mandate managed account that involves the coordination of holdings across an entire family or household. It can actually provide better tax management since you can put bonds in the family members with the lower tax brackets, and that way you'll uh, claim the interest income from that, which is obviously taxed higher than capital gains and dividends. Whereas the family member in the higher tax bracket can purchase equities um, where they will be claiming capital gains and dividends, which are taxed at a lower rate. There is also the private family officer accounts. This is not when just not just one advisor is on the account, but actually a team of advisors. And it is for ultra high net worth individuals of $50 million of assets or higher. And um, it allows high net worth individuals to focus on other issues rather than their financial affairs. And they have a full team of advisors at their disposal watching over their portfolio. And it really is a unified strategy. Now there are also some brokerage accounts. There's full service brokerage accounts and these provide clients with financial planning services combined with a fixed or unlimited number of trades and fees usually range from 1% to 2.5% of assets under management. There's also self-directed brokerage accounts and uh, this is when you won't get any advice from anyone else. Um, you can often look at Robo Advisory Services, which is an online service that gives investors pre-built in investment plans, um, but uh, there really isn't much investment advice to obtain, and there is definitely no financial planning or wealth management advice. And so anyway, those are all of the important concepts for this chapter in the Canadian Securities course. Again, stay tuned for the next chapter.